Field beginning to line up two by two. Behind the pace trucks, Robbie Price and Buddy Kofoid in the front row. Brendan Mullen and Aaron Reitzel in row two. Rico Abreu and Kerry Madsen in row number three. Ryan Timms and Justin Sanders in row four. Corey Eliason and Chase Randall in row number five. Getting ready to go. The yellow lights are off and the pace trucks are in, Dylan. Here we go. Who will take home the $23,023 $23 to win prize? We'll find out 35 laps. Robbie Price, Buddy Kofoid on the front row. The High Limit Sprint Car Series live from the Houston Speedway. We're green. Fantastic start as they thunder down into turns one and two. Robbie Price gets out on Buddy Kofoid as they go three wide middle of the pack. Trying to sort out everything from about second on back. The top two have broken away. Robbie Price leads lap one. Buddy Kofoid second. Reitzel's third. Rico Abreu trying to challenge for fourth. Abreu to the fourth spot. Brendan Mullen fifth. Oh, big stack up in turn number two oh. to bring out the caution now. One on its side. That was Casey Kane who just kind of drove over. I think the left front maybe of Justin Peck who's got his nose wing knocked off there. Scott Boguski in there and Chase Randall as well. So the red flag coming out. Everybody just got tangled up. I think Boguski and Peck were the first two to get together. And then Casey kind of came in there late just trying to avoid the mess. And we may have some cars visiting the Indy Metal finishing work area here. It's like a nose wing for sure on Casey's car if they don't find anything else wrong once they get it righted. And some fluid it looked like coming out of the nine car. Yeah, guys, down here in the Indy Metal Finishings work area already preparations underway for Casey Kane. A front end assembly already has the tire mount on it as well as the front nose wing. They'll address any other damages to that race car once it visits here. But it's about to be a busy place. This is going to be the first time tonight we see cars in the Indy Metal Finishings work area, a place you don't want to be. But, boys, sometimes the magic happens with all these crews pitching in to get these cars fixed up. Yeah, you can see the front end. A skew on Kane's car as it rolls here into the infield. And the work area basically just going to be right here in the infield. All the teams have their mules and pit equipment down here. And as Chris mentioned, that front axle is awaiting Casey when he rounds the corner here. So again, we got one lap in. So we'll have the choose cone, which is on the front straightaway right now. And the drivers will choose top or bottom, which lane they want to restart in. And Rico, the first one out of line, if you will, fifth in the order, and he'll go to the high side. 34 to go. And it's still Robbie Price and Buddy Kofoid, the top two, and on the front row. And again, good work to the Casey Kane crew and to Eliason's crew to get both those cars repaired and back out on the racetrack. 22 strong now as we come back to green with 34 laps remaining. Robbie Price on the inside, Buddy Kofoid on the outside of the front row. Robbie Price brings him down to the green as they race into turns one and two. Here comes Aaron Rice. Oh, boy, big touch there. Mullen into the wall oh. and upside down. Oh, man. Big we, trouble in the middle of one and two. We got all kinds of problems over here. Ryan Timms was spun out sideways, and then Brendan Mullins and Sam Haferty made heavy contact with each other off turn two. The thumbs up from Brendan Mullins on the back straightaway. That is certainly good to see. He got clobbered by Haferty. And then over here, Goodno, Cole Macedo, and Ryan Timms all collected each other. Timms half spun in front of the field, knocked the front end out of that race car. And the other two were just kind of innocent bystanders. Yeah, heavy damage on the front of Ryan Timms's car. Riley Goodno, big trouble for him. But boy, the, the big crash is uh, right there. Yeah. Mullen came down off the racetrack, got up into the wall, hit the wall pretty hard, flipped him over, came down the track, caught hay for teep. These cars are basically stuck together here. Yeah, and they already had to put some extinguisher out as some of the fuel from Mullen's machine was leaking right on the right, for, or right rear tire of Sam Hay for teep Jr. They're going to go ahead and spray that area. Once more, so the safety crew efficiently getting that deposited down to ensure that nothing catches flame. But now the task is going to somehow detangle Brandon Mullen as they just rip. And you can hear the sheet metal just absolutely in the aluminum just crunch and cringle here as they continue to try to by hand 
push Brandon Mullen over. So strength here by some of the crew members. They'll pull Sam Hafertip away, but heavy, heavy top wing damage. But honestly, if they get him on all fours, I'd be curious to see what other damage is because he hit pretty square. Again, the top wing took the brunt of the hit. You can see the drivers and the crew start to slowly get him on all fours. And he's moving around. So Brandon Mullen's going to climb out of the race car, ladies and gentlemen. Good to see that. And we'll assess Dylan and Tony some damage as we continue to clean this up, but there's going to be a lot of parts left behind here at Houston's. Well, I have some replays for you on flow. It looked like the right side down to right at the front of the cage on Hafertip's car sustained some pretty serious damage from that contact. Not sure if that was just the angle we had up here. Or that was a heck of a hit. So here's the Brennan Mullins. Oh, he got hit by Rico which knocked Mullins up the racetrack into the wall, and then he bounced oh. right into the path. And that, that down two dam yeah. damage was 100% right. It hit Hayfertip right in the cage. So Rico got into the left rear of Mullins, which shot him up the racetrack, and then he bounced right into the path of poor oh, Sam Hayfertip. That was a massive collision. That was a very hard impact. Good to see both those guys get out. Cole Macedo down in the Indy Metal finishing work area. They'll need a new top wing and a new nose wing on the Tarleton 21. And as we make our way down there, Ryan Timms is now on the hook. And so that 5T machine is going to be brought at least to the attention of the crew in the Indy Metal finishing's work area. But I don't see any chance of maybe getting that back out. That front end is pretty much mangled. Again, you talked about the contact, and it just folded over. I mean, that left front tire nearly 90 degrees dragging in the dirt. They get, they get the forklift out to remove the Brandon Mullen machine, so this delay here is going to give those in the work area some time. We'll come back to green with 34 to go. Robbie Price, Buddy Kofoid, Aaron Reitzel, Rico Abreu, and Kerry Madsen, the top five. And we'll see if we can get through turn one a little bit cleaner this time. Robbie Price on it early down the hill. Nice advantage by the time they get to the start and finish line. Green flag back out. Robbie Price getting out on him now. Rico goes to the top of the racetrack. He'll take the third spot from Aaron Reitzel down the back chute. Rico stays on the high side. Now closing in and sets his sights on Buddy Kofoy. Rico the only one up on the high side. He needs some help to get cleaned off. Larson's up there, but he biked through one and two. Had both oh, sides Ryan off the ground. Oh, Ryan Timms, look out! That was a big one, too. Well, he did the same thing Larson did. He got in there and got it up on the bike and got it up into the wall. You can see where he cleaned it off yep. there in the middle of the turn. A couple hard hits and bounces. Boy, that has been uh, – it's gone from bad to worse for Tim's. And at least the front axle looks straight. <laughs> Knocked the right front tire off the wheel. But, man, he got the sideboard on the top wing there. You see that flapping. And he'll climb out of the race car as we go red again. We got one more in the book, so we'll have 33 to go when we go back green. But Tim's is climbing out of the race car over there in turns one and two. Well, we've seen guys have problems on the bottom. We've seen guys have problems on the middle of one and two. And now it appears there's a ledge on the entry of one and two that has tripped Ryan Tim's up and almost tripped up Kyle Larson. Well, if uh, Dean Mills or Jeff Converse can point the camera down here, it, it, it's pretty gnarly of a ledge, and this has developed over the last couple of laps. And we saw Kyle get on the bike. Obviously, Ryan Timms did as well, but there's significant character here. There's not even a smooth kind of anything like ledge-wise to lean on. It's just more kind of a roller coaster, I should say, a little whoop section. And so, unfortunately, there's some of these ruts in here too as well that'll catch you off guard. So if you're going to run up top here, boy, there's a good one there too. It's going to be pretty gnarly. Light's already out, though, so we'll come back to green again, single file. Robbie Price, Buddy Kofoid, Rico Abreu, Aaron Reitzel, and Kerry Matson again, the top five, and we'll watch Rico on this restart, see if he's got the top lane to himself. Once again, 33 laps to go. Well, Robbie Price has her woed down here on this restart. <laughs> A nice slow pace. Keep your eye on him. Watch when he jumps on it. Boy, he's hanging on to her. There he goes. Gets on the gas, brings him down to the cone. The green flag waves. 
Price back to the bottom. Rico goes right back to the top as they work into turn number four. Yet Kofoid up there as well in the second spot. Now Robbie Price moves up to the high side through three and four. Rico's gotten rolling though through three and four. Now crosses Kofoid over. His buddy leaves in the bottom lane to race for second off two. Boy, left the bottom wide open for Rico who goes back to the top of turn number three as they work off of turn four. Now Rico trying to close in. Kofoid goes back to the top, leaves the inside open again, but Rico can't make it work. Battle for fourth behind the Aaron Wrights will the eight car. Kerry Madsen on the inside in the Vermeer 55. They run nearly side by side. Madsen gets a good run through three and four off the bottom. Can't do anything, but he reloads in one and two. Sanders gets by Caleb Johnson entering turn number one. That would be the race for the sixth spot. Sanders up to sixth, Caleb Johnson seventh, Kyle Larson eighth, Tim Kading ninth, and Henderson in tenth. Good race here for the four spot. Madsen and Wright will trading sliders through one and two. Madsen was able to clear him last time. He'll try to extend that lead through three and four, and he does. Kerry Madsen goes to fourth, Aaron Reitzel back to fifth. Reitzel stays up on the top of the racetrack, but back up front. Here comes Rico Abreu. He's closing in on Buddy Kofoid. Down the front straightaway. Kofoid to the top. Here comes Rico on the bottom. Slide job. He'll take the second spot. Robbie Price continues to lead. Abreu goes to second. What? How good is Price going to be now with Abreu knocking on the door? He's moved around Kofoid. He's got the racetrack ends figured out where he needs to be high, where he needs to be low. Slides to the cushion in one and two. As we watch Kyle Larson continue to move forward. Kyle Larson now closing in on Caleb Johnson. Johnson to the bottom. Larson from the top. He'll drive down the hill trying to make a run as they battle down the back straightaway for the second spot. Kofoy got to the inside of Abreu off of turn number four, but this time Rico able to get the power down and extend that gap for the second spot. Robbie Price in lap traffic ahead of them. About 15 car lengths as the race leader. Works the high side of three and four. Well, the first two cars he'll encounter have stayed on the bottom for him, leaving the top open, allowing him to stay up on the cushion. He hasn't had to leave the top side. Down the back, now he'll put a lap car between he and Rico Abreu, but Buddy Kofoid staying right there on Rico's tail. And there's three. Oh, Rico into the wall here on the front shoot. Climb the front shoot fence, losing the second spot. Kofoid goes around it, and Rico falling back to Kerry Madsen, who rides fourth. Right, so right there as well in the fifth spot. Back up front, Robbie Price has got three more lap cars on the bottom, and then Austin McCarl is the only lap car running the high side. That's his preferred line through three and four battle for second again. Here's Rico inside Kofoy. Can't get there, comes up a little short. Here comes Madsen closing in on Rico down the front straightaway. They both go to the bottom of one and two. Down the back straightaway, Buddy Kofoy in second. Rico Abreu third, looking to the inside. Rico. Here comes Reitzel putting the slider on Madsen in turn four. Throw a blanket over second through five. Down the front stretch, Rico again dials up the inside lane. Short slider on Kofoy for the runner-up spot, but he turns it back to the inside, gives him one of his own. Kofoy back to second. Rico back down the hill side by side for P2. Great battle for P2 as they work into one and two now. Here comes Kofoy back to challenge again. Rico Ooh. stays up on the top, made him break check a little bit, entering turn number three. Kofoy will take the spot. Rico back to third. But he wanted the high side on entry to turn three and he went up there and <laughs> took it from him. Robbie Price still out front comfortably as these two have continued to battle and behind them Madsen and Reitzel won't go away from each other either. Now Reitzel's trying to get rolling. This is the race for third as he goes inside Rico. Rico up on the top. Reitzel down low. Austin McCarl pulls his car to the infield. We stay green. Your leader's up on the top. The lap car stayed on the bottom. That's working right into Robbie Price's hand. And nobody in front of him on the high line for Robbie Price as he has done a nice job getting through this lap traffic and separating himself from these battles behind him. Kofoid settled into second, Rico's third, Reitzel fourth, and Madsen fifth as Carey dials up the inside lane again trying to challenge Reitzel for fourth. Your leaders working the high side of the racetrack. Madsen the first car on the bottom through three and four trying to close in on Reitzel down the front straightaway. Reitzel back to the cushion as he tries to reel in Rico Abreu, but no doing as they work off a two. Everybody's migrated to the high side that's in the top five right now, so it's gotten cleaned off. Bottom's getting a little dirty and through the middle as the lap cars continue to run down there. Kofoid starting to close in on Robbie Price. Little by little, we'll have 11 laps to go this time. Kofoid nipped away at the lead. Robbie Price has down the back straightaway. Rico did the same on Kofoid. Robbie Price, Buddy Kofoy, Rico Abreu, Aaron Reitzel, and Kerry Madsen, your top five. Ten laps to go right there for Robbie Price. He goes to the bottom to try and 
dispose of Casey Kane. And now Kofoid's continuing to get wound up on the high side. The gap is shrinking. It was seven tenths of a second last time by. It's less than that, just five tenths right there at the line. Two lap cars ahead, running the same line in one and two. They go to the bottom in three and four, allowing Price to have an open top racetrack off of turn four. He'll stretch it out a little bit as Rico knocks on the door. He'll try to get the spot back from Kofoid in two. Exactly what Robbie Price needs. These two start battling again for a second. Kofoid back to the inside. Rico keeps his foot in it, drives around the outside of Kofoid and goes back to the second spot. But he's in danger of losing third. Here's Reitzel with a big slider. Kofoid drives around that and holds on to the bottom step of the podium. Oh, trouble right on the front straightaway. Corey Day off the pace. And that is not what Robbie Price wanted to see. No, definitely not. As the caution flag waves for the Myers Constructors Sanitary Engineering 14D of Corey Day slowing there on the back straightaway. Well, that is going to put Rico and Buddy Kofoy right on the back bumper of Robbie Price. The only good news is they'll have a clear racetrack ahead, but giving them a shot here with just a handful of laps to go. Replay of what happened to Corey Day as he's unbuckling on the back stretch, so he's done for the event. And we'll try to explain what happened to him. Oh, he just went up in smoke. Yep. So no contact, car just... Decided it had had enough, and Corey knew that. That's why he was unbuckling. So he'll head to the infield. We'll have seven laps to go when we restart. It'll be a single-file restart. Choose cone and the double-file starts go away with 10 or less laps to go. Well, guys, I don't have to underest or undersell this. This has to be the restart of Robbie Price's life. The best of this year at sixth, looking for that first win of the year. Dylan, you've been a driver. You know what it feels like in the late stages of the race. What do you think is going through his mind right now when you got Rico and Buddy breathing down your neck? Well, I think that's just it, is you know who's behind you, and, and that's maybe the most nerve-wracking part. Now, he's done a great job on the restart so far of, of giving, giving himself a gap, and uh, he'll need that again, but it still may not be enough. Rico is like a bulldog. He will not go down without a fight. Seven laps to go. Robbie Price, Rico Abreu, Buddy Kofoid, Aaron Reitzel, Kerry Matz in the top five. Robbie Price bringing the field high in three and four. Drives across the middle of the green. Rico stays right there with him. Three car lengths back down to the inside. Your race for the lead. In turn number two, Rico Abreu takes the top spot. Robbie Price tried to counter him. Not going to get there. Rico Abreu to the lead. Reitzel bobbled, got over the cushion in one on that restart, fell out of the top five. Here's a battle for second. Kofoid to the inside of Robbie Price. He'll take that spot, so Price goes from first to third on the restart. Down to the inside comes Madsen now. He'll take a look at Robbie Price. A little smoke now off the 55 as they work into turn number one. Justin Sanders right there with him as Kyle Larson's in tow. Larson from inside of row number nine, but now challenging for a top five spot as some smoke starts to come out the left side of the Kerry Madsen car. Four to go, three to go, this time by for Rico. Madsen still chomping away on the bottom, trying to move past Robbie Price for third. Wants one more to put it on the podium. He goes to the inside in turn number four. Robbie Price stays on the cushion. That smoke continuing to wisp out the inside of the 55 as they work into turn number two. Down the back straightaway, Justin Sanders right behind Madsen. Kyle Larson goes to the high side. White flies out, one to go. Buddy Kofoy not close enough. Rico Abreu down the back straightaway. He snookered him on the restarts. It's going to be good enough for his second high limit win of the year. Rico Abreu wins at Houston's over Buddy Kofoy and Robbie Price. Good podium finish for Robbie Price there in the third spot. Kerry Madsen hanging on for four. Justin Sanders fifth. Kyle Larson coming home sixth. Aaron Reitzel seventh. Tim Kading eighth. Caleb Johnson and Corey Eliason unofficially rounding out your top ten. How about it, race fans? Rico Abreu. Second high limit win of the year to go with his victory at Grandview. Another hard-earned victory for the driver out of St. Helena, California. His 10th win this year across all the national series. And he's out of the car. Get the checkered flag and climb up on top of the 24. How about it, race fans? Rico Abreu.
Well, Dylan, that's why he is one of the hottest drivers in sprint car racing across the country. Poise, experience, and just absolute daring moves in that 35 lapper and did it when he needed to the most on that final restart. We'll let Rico get the helmet off. He's got the who's your neck band. We'll let him come across the front of the car and see another $23,000 check. Rico Abreu, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, just when we think we see it all, you do it again. Walk me through that final restart. Did you know what you need to do? Did you find the weakness over the course of that last run that you knew you could capitalize? I, uh, I just knew the tire pressures were going to come into play there at the end. Uh, you know, that was a lot of hard racing. Uh, you know, I got uh, not winded, but I was just uh, trying to slow everything down when you get going 100 mile an hour like that on a long run, and uh, your tires can get really hot, and you just got to process everything. So just... Unbelievable job for these guys. This is probably the most demanding track that we come to in a season where it's uh, fast paced like that. And, um, you know, the mistake factor is very minimal. So Robbie did an amazing job there. Um, you know, just if the roles were reversed, he probably would have done the same thing to me. So, um, you know, just everybody on this car, Whiskey Myers, it's so awesome to get them in victory lane. And um, the Hunt family came on board this year and um, just a, a cattle ranch, a family owned business uh, that wanted to be a part of our program here after the Nationals. And, uh, you know, I'm just super thankful for everybody involved. Uh, Pepper Jack Kennels, Marty and Misty Mello, uh, you know, do an unbelievable job helping me with my marketing. And, um, you know, everybody just uh, is uprising in this team. And, and Brady Forbrook and Ricky Warner and everybody, uh, Zach Middlebrooks, they just do an amazing job just um, getting me up front and in position and then just, um, you know, it just uh, allows me to execute when we need to. It was a little bit of a slow start, and I know race car drivers like that long kind of run, the momentum, you learn about your race car, but were you worried if the caution didn't come out between you and Buddy sliding each other, maybe the race was over? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, you can break momentum there, and, uh, you know, the caution definitely played in our favor there. So uh, that's just how it goes with racing, and, um, you know, still still hard to, to believe our Knoxville Nationals run and just how fast we were in Knoxville, and then to come here and have speed right out the gate. It just, uh, these guys... Like I said, um, you know, it's so important to have such a good team behind you and, and consistency throughout a season. And, um, you know, I want to say we're, we're almost 50% on podium finishes with our season. So it's a pretty special career here. Congratulations, Rico. Thank you. $23,000, or $23,000, 23, and he's got it done. His second high limit sprint car series when he gets it done here at Husets where he's won before. Let's visit with Buddy Kofoid, who comes up second in the Roth Enterprises 83 Junior. All right, Buddy, you and Rico were putting on some incredible racing there for second. When you finally got separated, what more did you need? Uh, just traffic, I guess. Um, you know, traffic was going to make it interesting. I think when I was second to Robbie, then I, once I got clear of some, some of the other lappers, I was able to inch towards Robbie and then... Um, you know, he couldn't quite put Casey away, and then I couldn't close in enough to put Casey away, and then uh, I just, I felt pretty damn good for the most part. Just stumbled, you know, on the top one time into three and four, and um, that was the only time I got tight, then that let Rico by, and then we were able to go back and forth, you know, however many different times, but, um, you know, he was able to, to get me at the right time when the yellow came out, unfortunately, and, um, you know, then... I felt really good on the bottom, but just the top was just so fast where it's hard to make it work. And made it work on the last restart and got Robbie, but um, I felt like we were equal to Rico, if not maybe a tick better. Just at the end, you know, once we got strung out, you're just running qualifying laps. So, um, no, I can't thank Dylan and Buzzy and Gage, everyone that helps out on this Roth Motorsports, Roth Enterprises, HR Livestock, 83 Junior. Um, you know, happy to have Toyota under the hood still making damn good power and um, you know super racy and drivable thanks to Ryder so we'll just uh, keep tuning on it and uh, you know I feel I feel bad for the guys that I I tripped up three and four that one time and maybe cost something so um, still love Houston's and uh, still love all the fans that come out and, and happy to be on the podium with Highlight Mint. It was fun to watch. Buddy Kofoy comes home second here at Houston's and we'll walk around where's Robbie Price? Oh he's at the front of the car. I went the long way. Robbie, uh, what could have been? That first win was a couple laps away. Walk me through your mindset when the caution flag comes out and you had to lead there late. 
Yeah, no, I felt decent in traffic. I was starting to, you know, hang a little bit coming off each corner. Uh, I about plugged it in the flag stand there with, uh, I think, about 15 to go. But, you know, I, I felt really good around the top, and, you know, Casey was kind of staying pace with me, and I ran the bottom once, and I felt decent down there, but I felt like I could keep my momentum a lot better, you know, ripping the top. And just on the restart, you know, I knew better. I felt like I got a decent run down the hill, and I probably should have tried to slide myself. There's so much moisture coming off of two. Uh, uh, I feel like I knew better, but it's also hard to abandon what you've been doing for the past, you know, 30 laps. But uh, I think I led up to about six to go, so I'd rather lose it with six to go than on the last lap. But they, uh, I'm a little frustrated, but again, it's a good run, you know, best run of the year for us. And I can't thank Jason and Jimmy and, you know, Casey and Taddy for helping tonight. And they, uh, you know, hopefully carry this momentum on to Jackson and then the West Coast Swing. Is it hard not to count the laps down when you kind of get that long green flag run? You're not seeing anybody really poke a nose there late in the game. Uh, is it starting to creep in your mind or, or not really? A little bit, but, you know, I felt pretty comfortable. And, you know, I, I didn't really peek up and try and look at the scoreboard at all. You know, I was kind of trying to focus on running my own race. But, you know, I knew we were getting towards the end. And I liked Casey, you know, kind of keeping the bottom there and I'd seen his nose a couple times but again I didn't really want to abandon what I was doing it's just you know on the yellow it always just throws a whole new wrench into the game. Like you said career best run for Robbie Price comes home third race fans that's your podium Robbie Price in third Buddy Kofoid second and your winner a two-time winner with the High Limit Sprint Car Series Rico Abreu. Dylan Tony. The learning experiences of a young racer against two of the best, it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be disappointing, but it's it's hard to hang your head about uh, the performance he put in all night long. Really, really impressive stuff. And uh, best run of the year for Robbie Price, so that's something to be proud of for sure. We'll give you the full field rundown. Rico Abreu, of course, your winner. It's his second high limit win of the year. Buddy Kofoid finishes second. Robbie Price was third. Kerry Madsen fourth. Justin Sanders finished fifth. Kyle Larson was sixth. He started 17th, so we think he may be the Tezos hard charger tonight. Aaron Reitzel was seventh. Tim Kading eighth. Caleb Johnson ninth. And Corey Eliason was 10th. Justin Henderson comes home 11th. Brooke Tattnall 12th. Cole Macedo 13th. Dusty Zomer 14th. Casey Kane 15th. Christopher Trom 16th. 17th is Corey Day. Austin McCarl 18th. 19th is Ryan Timms. And 20th is Brendan Mullen. The final five cars, Chase Randall was 21st, Scott Boguski was 22nd, Justin Peck 23rd, Sam Hayfertip Jr. 24th, and Riley Goodnow 25th. Certainly glad all those drivers are okay, too, after some really hard collisions there at the back of the field. The points update, this is unofficial, but uh, we can tell you the top two is correct. Kyle Larson still leads by 33 points over Rico Abreu. Corey Eliason, Justin Peck, Chase Randall, Anthony Macri, Ryan Timms, Dusty Zomer, Justin Sanders, and Brent Marks will round out the top ten. 